Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm coming at you with one of my very favorite videos to film and it is a foundation review. Today we are going to be talking about the brand new Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. This is still on the new arrivals page at Sephora and it is fairly new. I have had it for a little over a week now, probably closer to two weeks. Ilia is a natural kind of green beauty brand. I don't know if it's organic or not. I don't see anywhere on this foundation where it speaks that it is organic, but I do know that they are a green beauty brand. Excuse me. They are carried on Sephora. That is where I got this. You can also find it in some other green beauty retailers as well as their actual website. This foundation is one ounce and it retails for $54. That to me is not shocking. Being a clean brand, you are always going to pay more than you do for conventional makeup. And really this just falls in line with most foundations at Sephora. So the price does not shock me. It unfortunately only has 10 shades, which I think is ridiculous. Um, I find that to be the case with a lot of clean beauty brands, their foundation color ranges is very small. Now, I don't know if this is because um, it's more of like a niche part of the makeup world and maybe they don't have as many people buy from them and so they don't want to put out as much or if it's just because like so many other brands they are trying it out and then they're going to make more shades. I don't know. Either way, I think it's ridiculous to only have 10 shades and right now on Sephora, five of them are sold out. Um, I will be linking this at Sephora as well as um, wherever else I can find it online. I have the color Catalina, which is described as a medium with warm golden undertones. I did want to go a little bit darker than what I would typically wear right now, even though I feel like I did get it to work because the summer is coming and I knew that if I liked it, I was going to be wearing it a lot in the summer, it being a serum foundation and more lightweight. It has 30 reviews on Sephora and it's basically five stars. I love some of the titles of the reviews. What sorcery is this? I love that. Um, skin light foundation, glowing from within skin, must have for mature skin, love, 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 just really, really good reviews. And that's one of the reasons I got it. And another is because I really do like to find more natural options for those out there who don't want to buy conventional makeup. Um, this claims to have a medium coverage, the skin type, it says sensitive, normal, dry, combination, and oily, which is basically every single skin type. I will touch on that in my final review. The finish says that it is radiant, and it says it's a complexion perfecting serum infused foundation that is equal parts skincare and color correction. It delivers buildable light to medium coverage with a radiant finish. finish excuse me. It nourishes with a powerful blend of botanical actives that leave the skin looking refreshed, vibrant, and light skin only perfected. Now, because this is natural, please pay attention to the ingredients as you should anyways with any foundation, in my opinion, but especially for natural foundations, as I said before, they tend to have more um, ingredients that could potentially irritate your skin. If you do have sensitive skin, although this says this is good for sensitive skin, it does have aloe leaf, rosehip, jojoba, and marula oils um, that help calm redness, diminish the look of fine lines, and ensure the formula effortlessly melts into the skin for a more even, luminous, and glowing appearance. It is non-comedogenic, vegan, gluten-free, and cruelty-free. So again, I feel like if it was organic, it would say that in this section, and it does not. But all those other non-free things are very important as well. So again, this supposedly has skincare benefits as well. When you look at the ingredients, the first 12 ingredients um, are mostly natural or at least derived from natural ingredients. And after that, 12, first 12, it says that it contains 1% of less of each of the following, which it has quite a few, probably 20 or so ingredients after that, but it's 1% of less of each. Again, none of them are bad for you and they all are naturally derived ingredients. So I will talk about the application, the wear time, what I've used with it and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to see how this foundation works for me, then just keep on watching. Okay, so when I read the how to use section on Sephora, it says for a radiant finish with light coverage, use one pump and apply with your fingers. For buildable medium coverage, allow the first application to set for one minute and apply another pump, repeating application process. It doesn't say, but I'm assuming also with your fingers. 
And then it says that for an even softer finish, buff into the skin with a kabuki style buff brush after product has set. I have not tried it with my fingers. It's not, I mean, I only have a couple foundations that I prefer that with. Um, but I have obviously tried it with a sponge and a brush and I prefer a brush just because of the normal reasons that you typically get more coverage when you use a brush. And I feel like with serum foundations, I almost always reach for a brush because of how liquidy they are. The sponge tends to pick up a little bit too much product. So I have primed today. I use the Stellar Brilliant Primer. It's a deluxe sample. Um, it's like my second time to use it. I don't really know how I feel about it, but I also have color corrected my face. So we're just going to go right in and we are going to take this Catalina color and I'm going to take two pumps. So you can see right there, it is very liquidy. That almost dropped on my floor. That would have been not good. So I'm just going to apply it. This color, I intentionally got a little bit darker for summer, but it works out in the end. Um, so I just tapped it onto my face in little dots. And and then I'm going to take the Makeup Geek Face Buffer Brush. I've tried this with a lot of different Kabuki style foundation brushes. It works great with all of them. And I'm going to do like I always do when I use a brush. And I'm just going to start stippling it in first. I don't like to buff per se, even if it does say it's a buffing brush. I just feel like that takes some of the coverage away. So I'm just going to stipple it in. When I get down to here, I'll buff it down. I'll pick a little bit more back up on the brush. Do my forehead. My um, AC's watching Benji downstairs. Do you know there's a new Benji on Netflix? I grew up in the era of Benji, so I love it. I'm just going to take whatever's left on the brush and kind of buff it down. Like I said, though, it ends up working out. So right here is one side of my face. Obviously, if you're new, I do struggle with redness going in a straight line down my cheeks. Some days are worse than others. This day, it's pretty prominent, which I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to see on film because I can see it pretty well in the viewfinder. So I've got this side with no foundation, this side with foundation. I don't see the redness anymore. I feel like this is a solid medium coverage when you first apply it with a brush. That's what the how to use says. Now, if you do apply it with your fingers, I could imagine it being a lighter coverage. So it just depends on how you want to wear it. I have tried to build it up and it builds up wonderfully with a brush. It was kind of harder to build it up with a sponge just because again, I felt like the sponge kind of ate up all the product. So with foundation and primer, just with primer. Okay, so let me finish up the rest of my face and I only used probably not even half of what was on my hand. Okay, so if you can see, I can see a little bit of my redness right here. I don't have much on my hand, but I'm just going to stipple it a little bit more right here just for a little bit more coverage. Unless I'm wearing something like Estee Lauder Double Wear or something, you're going to be able to see some of my redness come through. And, you know, some days it's worse than others. So this is a warm shade. Um, it does come off very warm. I don't even know if it, maybe it looks orange on camera. It's not so much orange as it is very warm, but that will even out once we put concealer and everything on. Let me zoom you in. So this is the foundation up close. That brilliant primer um, is not, I have a hair on my face. Where is it? I hate that. That brilliant primer is not a pore filling primer. My pores look about like they normally do. I mean, I have medium sized pores. Um, but so far, so good. It does have what I consider to be a natural finish. I don't feel very dewy or luminous at all, but I certainly don't feel matte. Now it does claim to have a radiant finish. I just don't see that. I just feel like it's more of like a natural satin finish. Obviously you can bump up that radiance depending on whatever um, primer you choose to use with it. But right now I just feel like it's a good satin foundation, which is Satin and dewy are my favorite finishes. So I'm gonna go finish up the rest of my makeup and then I'll come back with my final thoughts. Okay, so I finished the rest of my makeup. <clears throat> Today I used the La Mer Pressed Powder to set the foundation. And I did spray a little bit of the Algenist Hydrating Mist, but I will say every day that I've worn this foundation, I have not buffed out with my Hourglass Powder. I have not felt the need to buff out with my Hourglass Powder, which if you have watched me for any length of time, you will know that's a pretty big deal. 
because everything lays on top of it so nice. Everything blends over it so nice. I just don't feel the need to. So I did not do that today. So this is a little bit of a close up of the foundation with the powder on top of it. So if we can get past the hair up, I'm just leaving it up. <laughs> We're gonna talk about my final thoughts of this foundation. Uh, I'm not gonna go through every single primer and powder that I used with it, but I will say that, uh, as I already stated, I do prefer a brush versus a beauty blender with this. I've not had a single primer or powder work negatively towards it. Obviously some primers and powders are going to give it a little bit of a finish, different finish throughout the day. For instance, my favorite combination is, well, I kind of had two favorites, but the Becca Backlight Priming Filter and the RMS Tinted Unpowder are fabulous with this foundation, as is the Algenis Primer, the um, Pore Filling Primer, Anti-Aging Primer, and the Chanel Powder, duh. The Chanel Powder looks good with everything. Let's just be real. Um, the Osmosis Powder, when I used the Osmosis Powder with it, I absolutely loved it. However, it did get a little bit more radiant throughout the day. Not a big deal, and it wasn't enough for me to feel like I needed to touch up. So my final thoughts on this foundation are, it is the most skin-like foundation that I own. And trust me, I don't say that lightly. I have gone through every single one of my foundations and I have compared it in my head as to what the final outcome of the foundation on my skin is. And the reason I came to this conclusion is because even my most favorite, favorite foundation at the end of a very long day, and when I say very long day, I wear my foundation for a long time, like 14 to 16 hours a day. So at the end of a very long day, I will look up in the mirror before I wash my face, and right around here, which is where we all have our pores, it's a little cakey looking. Like I can see the makeup on my skin. It doesn't matter what powder I use, it doesn't matter what primer I use, it's not the foundation's fault, honestly. I mean, it's like a gathering spot. I've got holes in my face, for heaven's sakes. Of course, it's gonna like sink into it after 16 hours. And I don't, it doesn't make or break a foundation for me because like I said, all of them do that. I don't really have one that doesn't to some extent. Now, obviously some are gonna be more than others, but this one, every single day I have worn it, does not do that. Does not cake up does not look any different in that area than it did, and it doesn't even look like makeup. Now, I just got done with my makeup, so obviously when I did my close-up, you're gonna be able to see makeup on my face, but I don't think it's near what some of my other foundations are, and that's what makes me draw the conclusion that it is the most skin-like. Now, if I used my fingers, I feel like it'd be 100 times more skin-like than it even is now. So, I haven't even done this. Let me look up, I'm gonna look up my Top five foundations video. My up Davis, up Davis. <laughs> I was just typing in Davis. Updated, because I mean I remember what is on there, but I don't want to speak wrong. Um. Oh, that's so hard, y'all. It's so hard. But this one has got to have a place in my top five. It has to. I, okay. I would probably. Now this one is number six that I'm about to take out. So don't think I still don't love it with every inch of my makeup being, but I would probably replace the, I feel like I'm getting out of focus. I would probably replace the Too Faced Peach Perfect foundation with this one. It's phenomenal. I cannot speak. I mean, it literally is, yeah, I feel like I'm cheating on osmosis. It's not better than osmosis. Okay. That's still my favorite, but it holds a very strong tie with the osmosis foundation. And the fact that it does not have anything bad for my skin in it makes me feel so much better about wearing it all the time and loving it every single time that I wear it. So do I recommend this? Yes. Who do I recommend it to? Quite honestly, the way it stays so well on my skin, I think normal to even extremely dry to oily skins, combo oily skins can use this. Rarely do I find that to be the case when a foundation says that it's okay for all skin types because honestly, it's going to favor one skin type over another. But this one I really feel like would be good for all skin types. Now, obviously, if you like drip oil two hours after you have your foundation on, you're gonna need to prime accordingly no matter what foundation you use. 
So obviously I would suggest doing that, but I don't, oh, oh, I don't think this is in store. And that's what's so upsetting next to the color range, which is really upsetting, but I don't think you can get this in store. However, I would check out certain, um, let me check it out for you right now. Okay, so I thought that Ilya was carried at Integrity Bot Botanicals, but it's not. I would still check out certain like clean beauty sites because a lot of them will send you samples. Um, so, you know, check that out. Maybe even Ilya.com will send you samples. I'm not sure, but definitely check all that out. Or just try it out and trust me. Like, I really think you're going to love this foundation. So I give it two thumbs up. And if it wasn't gross and I was actually flexible enough to do it, I would give it two big toes up. That's how good this foundation is. So I am so extremely happy that I got it and it will be something forever in my collection. It will be, you know, there's only a few like my top five, top six now, that I will repurchase when I run out. And this is by far one that I will continue to repurchase for as long as the company has it. So hopefully this helped you a little bit. I know this has been getting a little bit more buzz than some of the other newer foundations lately. So I hope that it was able to answer some of your questions that you may have had about it. If you try this foundation, let me know your thoughts on it. And if you're going to try it, let me know because I'm just curious like that. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed.